Welcome, everyone. We're going to kick things off here, and thank you for joining. Our webinar topic today is uh, mastering data-driven outcomes, and how do we start to integrate cutting-edge data into clinical practice? And we are joined by our panelists, Angie Wanasisi, and uh, we have Satin Patel and Dr. Michael Baslinton. They are all going to share their experiences of how they are building their programs and their protocols, the data they're capturing, how they've operationalized it, most importantly, how they're capturing outcomes from data that are helping to improve the efficacy for their patients. There is a deluge of data out there in the world, but how do we really synthesize it into something that's meaningful? And how do we show individuals that their health is improving in real time? The the world is changing where we don't necessarily have to wait six months between blood tests to figure out if protocols are working anymore. This can happen every single day in real time. And we have three awesome case studies that we're going to dive into today. So thank you to our panelists for joining. Uh, I also want to acknowledge our sponsors. We have giveaways from all of these companies coming up at the end of the webinar. And we'll be picking winners from the chat who have asked us uh, good, tough questions. So plug away in the chat. Uh, we'll have giveaways from True Diagnostic. We love their biological age testing. Quicksilver Scientific, we love their liposomal supplements. Angie, you may recognize that other name. Tell us a little bit about uh, Lontro. You want me to jump in right now? <laughs> Just a super quick overview on, on the product line. I want, thank you so much. Lantro is my brand of custom formulated skincare products made here in Canada, trying to do something that's very um, responsible and clean in terms of avoiding ingredients that some of us don't want in our bodies. Hallelujah. And we'll have uh, Delta G, we'll have a giveaway. Those are my favorite ketones. Love them. Uh, heads up, yours truly. And uh, Aura Ring. So we're, we'll be giving away an Aura Ring, a true diagnostic test from Quicksilver. We're giving away their liposomal glutathione and their liposomal GABA L-theanine, which I love. Angie can determine what she wants to give away. And then we'll have some Delta G ketones. So um, thank you to our sponsors for providing the giveaways. We'll announce them at the end. Ping us with questions. Let me just get the chat going so I can keep an eye on the questions as well. So uh, we'll start with some introductions, our panelists and also our subject matter experts in the chat. We'll talk a little bit about our learning objectives for today. Why are we all here? And then we'll go into our feature presentations. Angie, Michael, and Sachin are going to share some real world examples of data in practice and how we capture outcomes. The Q&A will be rolling throughout the, the whole webinar, so fire away. And then time permitting at the end, we'll take questions. We'll announce the um, giveaway winners, and then we'll wrap things up. So um, let's do some quick introductions here. First, uh, Dr. Michael Baslinton. And uh, a fun fact about Dr. Michael Baslinton is actually he was the second practitioner ever to use Heads Up. Michael, you might not even remember, but back in those days, we were charging $49 a month for unlimited clients. And you're like, hey, this is cool. How do I use this in my clinic? That was, man, that must have been five years ago that you jumped on with us. And you've been along for the whole ride as we've scaled the platform. So uh, welcome to the webinar. Just tell us a, a quick minute or two about body mapping, and we'll have more time to dive into your practice when we get to your section. But just a quick intro for uh, for today. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, I'm a family doctor in the UK of 20 years. Um, I work in the NHS, National Health Service. And in 2016, 17, I decided to branch out into sort of more root cause functional medicine, data driven healthcare. And I remember sitting down with my accountant and saying, look, this is a, I think it was a jawbone up at the time. I said, this is the I thing. This it. is everyone's going to. And they were like, this guy's crazy. And anyway, here we are. So um, they it's told going me really the well. same thing, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. So I reckon that if, as a 16 year old cyclist with my brother, when we used to document every mile we'd ever done on our bikes with our computers, that if, if I could do that at 16, then it was, it was the future. Um, so body mapping clinic was born in 2016, 17, um, looking for a platform to gather data and heads up health popped out and here we are. So yeah. Awesome. Welcome, Michael. We're excited to dive into your work. 
Sachin, you want to do a quick introduction? Hi, everyone. My name is Sachin Patel. I'm from Toronto, Canada, and a chiropractor turned functional medicine practitioner. And a few years ago, we developed a metabolic health program. And we wanted to, we posed the question if we could get better results with no testing and no supplements. And just a thought process and an idea that we put out there in the world. And then the question became, how are we going to track this? How are we going to know that what we're doing is working? And so we teamed up with Aura and then Heads Up Health. And since then, we've been tracking data of hundreds and hundreds of clients looking for signals and patterns uh, with our clients and using that information to help you know get people onboarded into our programs because the data doesn't lie. And so it's been just a wonderful journey and, and partnership with Heads Up. And it gives me that clinical validation that what I'm doing is working. And it also allows me to share results outside of just, you know, anecdotal testimonials from people. We can show screenshots and uh, and and the reporting features and in, in heads up also makes for more meaningful conversations with our clients because when that data comes in, we can we can show them the progress that they've made. And the other thing that we can do is gamify the process. So we can have a contest and gamify people's journeys with that data that we collect um, from cohorts of people that we work with. So thank you for creating this and this opportunity to share and pay it forward as well. Thanks, Sachin. I remember when I interviewed you on the podcast, it, it, one of the things that stuck with me is you said that as a chiropractor in Canada, even if you wanted to order a lot of blood work and diagnostics, there's just regulations that prevent you from doing that. So you said, how do I work around the system? And, and, and uh, instead of running blood work and diagnostics, how can I get data points every single day? And, and that's where you keyed in on um, the Aura Ring and HRV. So it was just a, a brilliant way to work within the parameters of uh, Health Canada and also be able to get the data you need to, to quantify your protocols and uh, personalize them. I know you gave another example where you had one of your um, clients simply just change the lighting in their home as the sun went down. And, and started to see some improvements in the quality of their sleep just by making these simple changes and getting some simple data points back to know that's working. So we're excited to dive into some of your examples here. Thank you for joining Sachin. And uh, welcome to Angie. Angie, tell us a little bit about Onberry and 8 West. Hi everyone, thank you so much for having me. It's a real pleasure to be here and to hear that I have so much in common with everyone including Dr. Baslington. I, I'm a really uh, avid cyclist as well, so I've been tracking my data for ages as well. I'm from Vancouver, Canada. That's where I am right now. Um, 8 West Clinic is a practice that I founded about 15 years ago. It's an MD-directed health optimization practice, which is uh, pretty comprehensive. We do surgical aesthetics, um, other types of sort of physical optimization. And really, as of the last three or four years, I've been taking us in the direction of more health optimization medicine. Um, on Barry is a new venture. Um, my first project that very, I'm really excited to say includes Heads Up. Um, it, that's on Barry. I think we'll talk a little bit more about that later when we get into the data side of things. But yeah, we're really just um, really very excited about the potential of using data in the practice. And it is so powerful and essential is really what I want to say. Thanks, Angie. You've got some awesome examples coming up that I, I can't wait to share with people. And uh, last but certainly not least is our chief medical officer, Dr. John Lemansky. Welcome, John. You want to do a quick intro? Uh, thanks, Dave. Uh, thanks to everybody who joined us. Sorry about the noise in the background. Uh, apparently, the gardeners didn't get the webinar invite, so I'll keep mine brief. But uh, my background is in internal medicine. I worked in the traditional medical space and uh, transitioned over to like a wellness prevention uh, practice after seeing how traditional medicine wasn't really making a difference for uh, the patients I was taking care of. Uh, my role with Heads Up is as the chief medical officer, and my focus is on how to really optimize heads up for clinical based practice. So I'll be on mute unless you really need me to. Sorry about that. Thanks, John. And then uh, in the chat, we have our subject matter experts that will answer anything uh, related to the slides we're presenting today. Uh, Ryan Michael, Chuck Hazard, Madison, they can answer any questions about heads up, about data, about uh, anything we're covering on the webinar. So you can uh, ping them in the chat. And um, again, they'll be uh, monitoring for questions as we get towards the end. 
and uh, do our giveaways. So uh, let's launch our first poll here. We'd, we'd like to learn a little bit about you. So um, now that we've done our intros, let me launch today's first polling question, which is tell us about yourself. So we're always interested in in the types of practices out there in in this type of healthcare and and how you identify your practice. So um, the first question is just a little bit about you and the type of business that you run. So uh, we'll let this run for a minute here while we move on. Can you guys see the poll quiz? I don't know if it's working. I launched it. No, can't see it. It disappeared. It was there and then it left. Let's try that again. Well, I think it was in the chat. Was it in the chat? Yeah, I saw it. How about now? Okay, great. We got it. All right, we'll let that roll. So why are we here today? And what do we want to take away from today's webinar? Well, first of all, we're starting to see a trend where patients are bringing data to you as, as the practice, and they're asking for this data to be incorporated in their program. They may be bringing in data they're measuring at home from a, a glucose monitor or data re related to heart rate variability or some of the diagnostics they may be running. So we're seeing a subset of your clients or patients that are starting to expect that this data is included in their program and, and they want that clinical interpretation and that clinical expertise on the data, which is great. But then the next question is, okay, how do I actually bring this into my practice? I, I'm using an electronic health record system that doesn't integrate any of these devices. I have got no way to access this data. I've got no way to really come in and work, sit down with someone and look at it together and include that as part of the program. So the first is just the patients that are pushing you or clients, depending on your practice. We're, we're, we're hearing um, that that's starting to become increasingly common. So we'll show some examples of how that works. Uh, working with some of the more sophisticated diagnostics on the market, uh, that could include things like some of the biological age testing. It could include things like DEXA scans. There's lots uh, or genetic information. So how do we bring more of the sophisticated diagnostics beyond just blood work into the program? Uh, underwhelming EHR and practice management systems, they're, they're phenomenal at what they do, which is to run the business, but they're not really able to meet the needs of lifestyle medicine, uh, integrating lifestyle data in practice. And I can't tell you how many uh, practitioners I talk to who even just need a simple, beautiful way to show a trend line of blood tests. Like some of the most basic trending you, you would expect is very hard to do with, with even traditional blood work. Uh, how do we show value? We work with concierge membership practices that charge anywhere from a couple thousand dollars a month to $30,000 or $50,000 a year. So how do we start to show outcomes that health is improving and people are doing things correctly? How do I actually implement this in practice? Sachin, you went through uh, a whole exercise to figure out how do I even get sizing kits and rings to people? Even that is an operational challenge. Like, okay, yes, we want to do this, but how? How do we even build this into the program? So we'll talk a little bit about that. And then how do we um, use data for outcomes marketing and to show efficacy on a pro program? So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. But these are some of the macro trends. And we've got three case studies here that have cracked the nut, so to speak, on how to do this. And they're going to share their expertise with us here today. I'm going to end this first poll. Uh, the giveaways before we go on. So we're, we're giving away an aura ring. We will send you a sizing kit and just get us the ring size. And uh, we've got an aura ring giveaway with a one-year subscription. We've got a true diagnostic, true age test. That's uh, one of our preferred biological age tests. There's other great ones out there, but we'll be giving away a true diagnostic test. Uh, Delta G ketones, we've got a sample pack from them, uh, about $264, $500 off uh, your next heads up uh, monthly invoice. Uh, Quicksilver Scientific, we're giving away a liposomal glutathione and a GABA L-theanine, uh, two of their products that I use regularly. And then Angie's got a skincare kit. Four of them, Angie, is that right? 
four skincare kit. That's right. Yep. Four pieces. Awesome. Thanks. These are uh fun prizes. So um we'll uh we'll announce the winners at the end of the webinar. But all products we know and love and and, and use every day here at Heads Up. So um I'm gonna hold on the polling question. I want to start getting into the content. I'll tee that up later. But uh Angie. Uh, we're going to start with you first. I know you gave us a very brief introduction, but um, anything else you want to add before we dive into your content here? Maybe just uh, the origin story. You've already talked about the work you do, but anything you want to add here from the slide before we dive into your data stories? Yeah, sure. That'd be great. I'd, I'd love to tell the quick story of sort of, sort of how I got here. And I'd I love that. <laughs> so I think my story is very similar to other people in this space. I mean, we come to preventative medicine, health optimization, functional, integrative, whatever you want to call it, because we want something better for ourselves and we want something better for others. And my quick story is that I was an avid cyclist and sort of at the definitely recreational cyclist, but took it quite seriously and wanted to be able to perform. And during the COVID uh, lockdown, I you know really got into e-racing. So this organization put together this really cool system where you could e-race online and it was simulated and I had an avatar. It was incredible. I joined a team of women around the world that I'd never met in person. And we started e-racing in our garages a couple of days a week. And it kind of saved me from what was happening in COVID and the stress, et cetera. But what started to happen is stress and a ton more intense exercise and all the things that was going on. I started to feel quite poorly and started to have symptoms of, you know, heart palpitations, mood problems, not being able to sleep, not being able to think straight, et cetera. Um, taking all the advice that I heard on the internet, trying to do all the things that I thought were right for me, like, you know, uh, fasted workouts, cutting my carbs, et cetera. And I sort of got myself into a pretty poor emotional state, spoke to my family doctor, and it was recommended to me that I take antidepressants. And if, you, if this has been recommended to you, please don't listen to me. You have to work with your practitioner, but that just mm -hmm. did not feel right to me. And when I started researching, I realized um, and was pretty gobsmacked to discover that I was in perimenopause and had never heard about it. And that all of these symptoms are actually quite typical for somebody experiencing this. And to make the rest of my short story quick, I then dove into studying integrative medicine, functional, A4M, I4, um, IFM. I am not a doctor or a practitioner, but I really launched myself into educating myself about it and realized that there is a massive need for this in Canada, and I just couldn't get it. And so I'm certainly not the first person to do it in Canada, but I do see myself as one of those people that are a part of a group of trying to bring health optimization, and, and really with a specific big focus on women. So the program that I've launched that includes Heads Up is really very, um, very for women. And that's hopefully a good intro. And uh, maybe maybe I can tell you a bit more about the program. That sounds awesome, Angie. I've been through a similar experience where I found that the things that used to bring me relief from stress, especially training, at, at some point, they can start to become counterproductive and maladaptive. So what used to be my outlet started actually making the situation worse. And I couldn't do the things I loved that used to make me feel so good. And much like yourself, I didn't want to use any type of uh, pharmaceutical intervention. I needed to figure out how, to, what are some of the more uh, lifestyle driven approaches that I could use to, or to reverse engineer those things. That's a large part of the origin story of Heads Up. So um, definitely a similar experience there. So um, key focus areas, you mentioned them, but do you just want to, uh, anything you want to recap here? Beautiful clinic, yeah, by the way, yeah, this is so stunning. Much. Thank you so much. So this is our second location. We just opened it about three months ago. I'm extremely proud of it and I've worked really hard on it as has our entire team. This is our team about five years ago. We've grown a lot since then. So we do have uh, two physical spaces. Health optimization medicine is really the big big focus or addition to our second clinic. We have DEXA scanner, VO2 max testing, hormone optimization, et cetera. I have a really skilled team of uh, medical practitioners, nurses, et cetera. Uh, we are very, we, we try to provide that combination of lifestyle and treatment-based. So treatment, meaning those exogenous things that you can take or 
treatments that you could have, like a physical treatment with a laser or a machine, but also the lifestyle-based stuff, which is really helping people work on those modifiable lifestyle behaviors. And yeah, I think the uh, technology and data really has always been a, a big focus, and I'm trying to bring that forward into our programs. Wow, it looks stunning. Thank you. So this is that, Dave, this is on Mary. This is the program that included uh, Heads Up as a major pillar. I want to say thank you to the team at Heads Up because it actually was a very collaborative effort. I started working with you guys over a, probably a year and a half ago and started having meetings with, um, you know, David, your lead, um, sorry, Brian, your lead developer. And I think he saw me going through the process of trying to put this together. And I just want to say, I could not have done this without the amazing support that I've received from the Heads Up team. It's not, it's not easy to do something like this. There's a lot of different parts that are required. And truthfully, in the, be the beginning, I didn't even know or understand what data could do for me. And it's been a journey to learn that, but I've had fantastic support from you and your team. So thank you so much. The program um, integrated was run as a pilot and I and was it amazed me, but I, in one email blast, managed to sign up 37 women to it. So I knew I was awesome. on the right track. Yeah, that's a good indicator. <laughs> good indicator. So everyone received an aura ring. I'm sure your people will have questions around how to structure things. The way that I decided to do it was just, it had to include aura. And that was because I wanted everybody to be on one device to begin with, so that we could potentially get some comparable data from one device. I know right. there's lots of other ways to do it makes it that. Makes a ton of sense. Yep. We did advanced blood work, CGMs, nutrition tracking like baseline tracking period, and the DEXA scans were performed at our clinic. Um, so there we go. So we ran it as a cohort. And perhaps if you go to the next slide, I can show the data story. Heads up is incredibly powerful. I don't think you can really, and for those of you who use it, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, it can literally do anything that you want it to do and you just need to learn and decide what you want it to do for you so i was really wanting to run this as a cohort i was trying to sort of replicate that feeling of being on a team like when i'm on my my team with my my friends that i cycle with when you're in a that team makes sense. you right it's that being able to work together empower each other support each other yeah there are pros and cons to running it as a cohort as people who have done this would know but should I just start showing this, Dave? Is that what you were hoping? I was just, I thought with this one, we could talk through it. So yeah. for this one, this is a report we built that's looking at the Aura AM readiness score. And, and Angie, this is obviously giving you information about each participant in the cohort, uh, their average recovery score, uh, how many days above 90, their max, their min, their low scores. So how are you using that as part of the program? Yeah, so they just the the ability to sort the information so quickly is really powerful. Just to you can't see it because it's not live here, but you can sort of click and sort. Yeah, you can click on any of these columns. Right now, it looks like you're sorted based on average score, but you could sort based on max or min or or any other parameter there. So that yeah. lets you look at how each person's doing in the cohort relative to everyone else. Are you sharing this information, Angie, in some way for? or a subset of it so that everyone sees where they're stack ranked in the program or is it just for your use? So both, so both. So, you know, because this is a pilot, there's a bunch of things I'd love to be able to be able to do better in the future, but people love seeing how they stack up compared to others in their population. And mm -hmm. so that is one thing that we've, that we've done is people can sort of see how, how they compare. Of course, you have to hide the personal information. You can't of course, you know, yep. names and that sort of thing, but that very motivating for people to see and understand how they compare. And then for us on the, on the coaching team, you can just so easily see who's starting to um, bubble up to the top or bubble up bob down to the bottom. So that could be, for example, an opportunity for a touch point. And so, for example, Absolutely. on the right hand side, you can see the red. So there's a participant who, yep, starting to see a lot of red so that's yeah, a this person's down 22% on their HRV. This would be a good indicator that maybe this person's overtraining or maybe they're already in a stress state or there's some reason that that they're down 22%. And that's that's where you may want to have that person actually back off and, and uh, take it easy and figure out what else is going on. So I just want to add, uh, address one question. Somebody asked what total points was. 
Uh, we put that in there. It just aggregates all of the readiness scores. So if you had 10 nights at 85, you would that would be 10 times 85 would be your total points. We were just using this as a little bit of a gamification. So it's just basically the number of nights times the score. And we were using this uh, to calculate a, a different way to um, measure who's who's performing well. So that's uh, that's total points there. And then, Angie, this one is HRV. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about that with Sachin, but you're also using that here. How does that one play into what, what you're doing? So the HRV, so there is a, an educational component to it, but it's sort of... Most certainly, yep. It's, that is important. Uh, that's teaching people about the fact that HRV is your... It's sort of a... It's a it's a baseline, it's a starting point. And then what you look for from there is trends and trying to connect what you might be doing uh, lifestyle wise, for example, and what that is doing to your HRV. And you can certainly start to see patterns. I mean, you can see yep. patterns related to uh, stress overload from training, uh, changes in nutrition, changes in sleep, for example. And so that's sort of how we were using it as um, trying to trying to educate people that is it is like Part of it, it is one of the barometers, so to speak. Um, yep, but HRV is, HRV is one of those metrics where it's not necessarily a good idea for you to compare yourself to your to your population. No, so it's a little different than AM readiness. HRV is very, very uh, individualized. And so a, a good number for someone could be 30. A, a good number for another person could be 120. But what you're really looking at is the, is the deviation from baseline. That's mm -hmm. what really lets you use this data relative to AM readiness, which is a little more ubiquitous. HRV, you really need to look at their baseline value and then deviation from baseline during the program that you're running. Yeah. And such an opportunity to reach out to clients. And so, for example, when you see red like this, um, a coach could have a touch point. And uh, with this particular person, we reached out, hey, what's going on? And as it turns out, there was something going on in her life and her sleep was really started to go downhill so that she really appreciated that. Teaching people how to read this data is is also one of the most powerful things you can do because because once they know how to read it, you don't necessarily even need to be there anymore, and people start to learn how to self calibrate once you once you teach them how to use the numbers. So I assume that's also part of it. But there's some nice numbers in here, and and then just sorting from highest to lowest here, you see a wide range. You see people that are down twenty two percent to up thirty percent, and so you start to see who's responding really well. And who probably has some other areas of their life that that might need some attention. And some of it's just transient. You know, when I'm on the road for a couple of weeks, this number goes down. It could be something as simple as that, or it could be something more serious that's going on. But, but this gives you information on uh, that you can act upon. So um, this is great. Uh, let's look at the next data story. And can you tell us about uh, this one, Angie? This yeah. is fasting insulin data. Yeah, so what I'm trying to show here that the data really has an important place just beyond how you use it clinically. And so, for example, you do want to, and Heads Up is very powerful this way, you can pull these this data on any metric you want to, I mean anything. So I pull it on ALMI, Appendicular Lean Mass Index, for example. Yeah, and then for the DEXA. Start, exactly, for the DEXA. Mm -hmm. So I can start to see like the women in my group who is lower down, who's getting closer to sar sarcopenia, for example. Awesome. Um, so extremely powerful in, in terms of being able to pull metrics. You can also export this data and run whatever Excel you know, sheet analysis you want to on it. So it's powerful to begin with, but then the raw data is very usable also. Um, but you know, it actually can be used to identify, you know, your future programs or, or or marketing efforts, for example. So if you have this idea that you're going to launch a metabolic program and put some effort into it, maybe you can prove the case that that's even a good idea by taking a look at a metric that is related to that to see if you have enough people who would perhaps benefit from it. So it's really powerful that way, too. This is a lab result. The previous slide we were looking at data from a sensor, but you're also pulling in blood work, one of the most predictive indicators of metabolic health, fasting insulin. So even just the fact that you're looking at that is is a good check engine light. So that that's a good example of how to bring in uh, traditional blood work. And then you've got uh, another one here. This looks like it's uh, looking at the relationship between uh, resting heart rate and HRV. And, and we know that 
there's good indicators here as resting heart rate goes up and HRV goes down. That's also another check engine light. So uh, what's the data story here, Angie? Yeah, so that is that that pattern, and this is what um, what our health coaches are really are really expert in. So it's part of identifying the pattern and then being able to show the client. And again, it's kind of like an aha moment for them when they start to be able to connect the dots with what's happening in their life and what they're feeling and what's happening. And so we try we try to do both. We try to 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 show them and help help them have the light go off. And then we also are trying to teach them to be able to interpret their own data as well. But yeah, this one just basically shows that as resting heart rate goes goes up, HRV goes down in the and this is this is from an actual person in the program. So this is a, a screenshot of their actual data. And I imagine as one one of the ways to improve HRV is through cardiovascular fitness. So I I, I would I expect you can also show people's HRV improving as their cardiovascular fitness goes up, as their VO2 max goes up. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, it, we can also set alerts on this data. So if you're listening, it, it's it's very time consuming to go in there and look at these patterns every single day on every single client. So we do have ways to just basically configure alerts in the system so that Angie doesn't necessarily even have to log in. She just gets a ping when HRV has gone below baseline and resting heart rate has gone above baseline. So you can really drill in if you want to, but we can also set automated notifications and you can tell us what kind of signals you want us to basically pluck out of the data. And then you'll just get, you can basically like subscribe to different patterns in the data and just get notified. So there's there's different ways to analyze it. But then the Oura Ring, there's also the temperature deviation and, and just going back to the COVID days or, well, any viral or any infection or any illness, you'll see a pattern where temperature goes up, HRV goes down, resting heart rate goes up. So it can also help to um, identify overtraining, impending illness. And then on the flip side, seeing these numbers get better is also very motivating. Um. Let's look at this one here. What's the key <laughs> takeaways on this one, Angie? <laughs> well, just that data data tells such a, an interesting story and people love um, learning about themselves by looking at their data. Um, this is just actually my blood glucose. Um, but there's a couple of things here is to take a look at is, you know, if you if you are going to start working in data, it is a good idea to have somebody on that team that is always making sure that they really know and understand it. Um, Absolutely. There are limitations with data as well. And so the example here is just my day and what I did. And I woke up and I, you know, I didn't follow any of my own advice and went and did an indoor session without eating anything and blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm not perfect either. Um, came to my clinic, decided to get in the red light bed, et cetera. I started getting like super hangry, had a cookie. And then I had this uh, ginormous um, spike on my CGM. I actually was worried that I was like, you know, like faint or something like that. Although I didn't feel like it whatsoever. And um, does anybody have any idea what this might have been from? <laughs> because it's a very high spike. Any guesses? <laughs> Definitely not the cookie. The cookie wouldn't take you that high. It could have been the intense training and the cookie cortisol. <laughs> Yeah, something like that. I, I I basically ended up having an IV that had a must have had a boatload or had a boatload of vitamin C in it. Wow. And, um, and as you and, and there actually is a disclaimer on the CGMs, but I'd never experienced it myself is that the CGMs don't function properly when you have a, lo a lot of vitamin C in your system. So it just goes to show that, um, yeah, just really understanding the data and always asking questions like is like, is this making sense, I think is important. Awesome. That's a great example of finding an anomaly and then figuring out what caused it. I didn't know that about vitamin C and the CGMs either. Mm -hmm. So uh, last slide here. Uh, what can another practice learn from your experience so far working with data? Just a quick summary here. Yeah, sure. So just I liked the the pilot thing worked out well because people are forgiving and they understand and they feel like they're a part of helping you develop. I a love product. that. Yep. And uh, yeah, because it, it's not perfect. I mean, there's definitely going to be bumps in the road the first time sure. you run something. Heads up is on your team. Um, yeah, just 
can't thank you enough for all the support that I've had from you and the people on your team. Just the FaceTime that I've received to even get this going has been uh, fantastic. I was thinking about all the pieces of software that I use in the variety of companies that I manage, and it must be like around 30 or something. So, you know, you guys have bubbled up in terms of being able to support us here. Um, it's very powerful if you can build a community. I think that's what people keep coming back for is if they feel like they're a part of something important, they really want to remain connected there. And, and I think that's all I really wanted to say. And just like all the best to everyone um, who's using data in their practice. It's amazing. Awesome. Thank you, Angie. That was phenomenal. Thank and you. congrats. You know, you you had a vision and you just went and figured it out. And I remember some of those early conversations where you were just working off the back of the napkin and, and how do I bring this to life? So from where you started to seeing you present this data now, just an awesome journey. So huge congrats. Thank you so much. Mr. Baslington. Hello, Dave. Good evening. Yes. Well, it's e yes. evening here. What, yeah. Thanks you? for staying on. It's got to be what? Close to 9 oh, no. p.m. there? Um. Nearly, yeah, but it's the night is yet young. Oh, indeed. T don't tell my aura ring that, but um, yeah. Well, we're, we're, we're keeping an eye on your data there, Basinton. Okay. We'll make sure you're in bed here <laughs> exactly. immediately after the webinar. I didn't tell know us I was about. A, yeah, I didn't know I was a second client to to kind of join, which makes me now think that I must be the slowest growing clinic that you have because I because <laughs> things are going very slowly and steady, which is great, which is how I want it. But, well, um, you were building something as well. You you were working inside mm. of the traditional healthcare system and yeah. then much like Still Angie, am. incubating this other idea of the type of care you really wanted to deliver. So yeah. and, uh, tell us about body mapping and, and the focus areas there. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on. And Angie, you're, you know, you're... Um, project looks is totally inspiring because that's it's really exciting to see you doing that because that's where I'd love to get to with the bigger groups and things but yeah so that's just yeah so really inspiring and thank thank you for that that's good that's great um I won't go too much into my backstory a shout out to Chris Kelly at Nourish Balance Thrive who I think interviewed you a year or two ago Dave um mm -hmm. so he did a podcast with myself back in February. So if you want to sort of know a little bit more about my background, then it's all there. Um, but essentially, I pivoted away from engineering in my early 20s towards medicine, um, thinking that medicine would be the sort of application of engineering to the human body. Um, and then I just I found myself on this language course called a medical degree, where you just sit in lectures and get and it, it, it's a it's a linguistical explanation of of learning the language of medicine and not and glossing over the root cause of why things happen um which was a big disappointment i think and i realized that no one was really going to tell me exactly why that and how the body worked or, and the biochemists the clinical biochemists a little bit but we were sort of whisked away from them and sent to the sort of hospital wards to to use long words and um so it was it was an interesting so the medical training is an interesting sort of it's quite a historical um background to sort of the human body so i was i i kind of exited that fairly frustrated um and by the time i'd sort of in 2015 found myself in a family practice here in the uk um i realized that i was never going to really be allowed to explore what was wrong with people in depth i mean i think what we have in the uk or had in the uk as family medicine was pretty close to functional medicine at one point unfortunately i think it's drifted away a little bit in that it's holistic so there was a there's a lot of holistic care but i i just re realized that in my lifetime i don't think i'd ever be able to order an insulin test on the nhs for a patient so and that began to frustrate the frustrate me a lot so we as a as a group of doctors we all start we, we we there was specialization within general practice or family medicine and my specialization was to reduce my hours to part time and and get branch out in the in to create a, a different company completely unrelated to the nhs called body mapping um and it's a it was a sort of a root cause ill health um project really and I'm currently, I currently have about 50 clients, so fairly small. Um, mm -hmm. The way I work 
most of those clients are have come often get referred because of metabolic health issues and probably because that's where my own route into the sort of more functional sides of medicine came about i don't know whether anyone remembers um the real meal revolution john o proudfoot from south africa banting and prof noakes yep so while we were scratching our heads in the sort of 2011 12 about why all these patients were developing abnormal liver function tests um the guys in south africa were explaining it so i sort of it was again it was a, a pretty big eye opener professionally to realize that advising a bowl of porridge for all my diabetic patients in the morning was was probably not the way to go so i went down the um so the so the metabolic health sort of interest developed at the same time that the body mapping came about and that's so most of my clients have come to me through that route um some are more just health and wellness clients who want to ensure they feel well but they they want to make sure that their all their data is optimal um yep. and i've ended up I, I i i met up with chris kelly who's we have sort of he he's uk he was born in the uk moved to the west coast i think in his 20s after his degree but we were in the same school year different schools but i met up he did a presentation at a british um society british sports medicine society in doncaster here in the center of the uk and he was building a another sort of data analysis program which so that was that was the next step and it, in a, it gave me a tool to um, analyze blood testing at a greater, greater depth. But what I was kind of missing was this piece of software that kind of brought all, all of the data together in one place. And also, I think, was a tool of communication between myself and and the patient. And awesome. before you guys turned up, and I heard, I, then I, I can't, I forget how I found out about you, but um all the other sort of stuff out on the market at the time really didn't cut, didn't cut it. So soon, so it was a sort of accumulation of what was going on in my professional life, frustrations there, um, learning where there might be less frustrations, meeting Chris Kelly, um, and then heads up sort of turning up on the market. So, and by sort of 2018, 19, I was beginning to get some patterns in place in terms of how we, how I as sort of, could actually get clients to have blood tests collate the data present it back to them and it's because the uk has got such good coverage through the nhs it's it was quite challenging at the time to find labs that were private that would do the work so there was a lot of a lot of sort of footwork in terms of organizing the um collection of blood samples and analyzing it and and we're, we're much further on now than we were so because of that history that's kind of matches my clients so this is this is well let's dive a, in so yeah uh, dive um, in yeah tell us a, a little bit about how you're working on metabolic health this was your first data story michael and this is a type 2 diabetic on metformin yep. who had excellent diet and exercise but they were missing a very important piece of the puzzle which was sleep yeah so this guy is his name is david he is a sort of chap in his I think early 60s or late 50s, who was heading up an engineering company. Through fi he was finance based, so good. He's numer numer numerically literate, very organised, does what he's told, follows the plans, and had already had some work with a good nutritional team who had advised about sort of reducing carbohydrates, improving protein. So he had good nutritional advice. He had a personal trainer, so he was going to the gym regularly, doing everything right. But um, his average sugar levels, his what we use in the U UK, HbA1c. Um, we use millimoles per litre was, was, wasn't great. So it was sort of well into the diabetic range. Um, and he was wearing a, a Libra, um, device. And so I persuaded him to get an aura, aura ring and the outcome after several months, this, this is, this demonstrated to him that sleep and stress were probably a big, a kind of a part, a portion of the cause that he was overlooking so and i managed to present him with the data in a way that he could see that there was some correlation i don't know whether it's statistically significant or not but you can you can see that there's these patterns so those two circles the one on the left is with the higher glucose um 
And yep, you can see the spikes here. Yeah, Those are the blue yeah. lines. So this that's is over several. That's that, an that high, day. high line there is the max glucose, and then the red line is is the sleep score. Yes, which obviously has gone down significantly. Yeah. And then you can see here, clear yeah. as day, as as better sleep yeah. is coming up, you can see the, yeah. the 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 max glucose coming down significantly on these days. And it was it was good. He he really engaged with that. And I mean, he subsequently changed his job. I don't think it was just because of of the work we did together, but it 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 had an impact and i think it reassured him that his life the, the changes he had made the diet and the exercise weren't worthless they 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 had added value but he was missing that portion i think sometimes with clients they can go really hard and work really hard in one area yep and then get quite disillusioned when they don't see the results they expect or you they think you promised them um so by show you know sort of shining the, the light a little bit laterally and helping clients to think um think beyond what they their their current sort of mindset they can act they can actually see where the gaps are and i think um we haven't got a slide on this but usually we use chronometer which we measure macros and that all feeds into the to heads up as well i just last week one client said oh i hadn't realized that i was you know actually my the amount of fat I'm eating, my calories are pretty high. And we were able to talk about that. But once you've got the data, it's a three-way conversation, you, the client, and the data. And the data speaks to both you and the client. And it's sometimes the data tells you one thing and the client the other, and both are true. And you need to sort of amalgamate those, that conversation. But it's allowing the data to speak to both of you, you and the client. And I think that's where you, that's where the sort of real breakthroughs happen. If and you I just, think uh, yeah, sleep yeah. and stress, Michael, are also there's there, a lot of people don't necessarily associate those with with blood sugar. We work with another diabetic clinic, Seba uh, Health, mm. and and uh, optimizing sleep is a huge part of putting diabetes in remission. Mm. And it's, it's a non obvious correlation. So just yeah. by helping someone see the correlation, you can make some behavior change and then people can read the numbers on their own once you teach them how and to I fish, think I think so to speak. coming back to the the original you know the jawbone you know I was always when patients came and told me about my sleep their sleep you never really their description we know it's poorly correlated to the reality and I as a physician okay. I was always frustrated I, I could never quite trust not that I didn't trust the patient it's just there was no hard data and fi and that that's really that was why I, the where i knew the wearables were the most were, were important because of sleep because you can actually begin to you know begin to sort of map out what's going on so this is the same similar data but in a i think i'm not sure it's the same time period but it's a slightly different depiction of the same same information so as the sleep improves the and it's also also interestingly yeah this is includes includes his weight includes weight the, yeah so I the think, blue line uh, yeah. so i think what's going on here is you've got actually you've got some fluid loss because of the insulin yep so he he's not on insulin so he's got some pancreatic function remaining um so as he as he sleeps in he sleeps better cortisol go improves and better glucose control he needs less endogenous insulin and therefore he loses a bit of fluid and that's why i mean he's he's lost I think two kilos over a period of two weeks, which isn't going to be fat burning, but it's definitely fluid. Man, it's it, he's he's retaining a little less fluid, and again, it, he can relate to that when he steps on the scales, he sees it. Um, what he's what he's not seeing without the aura ring is he's not seeing the sleep improvement. And this is noisy, and I think that's where yeah. you come in as a clinician, yeah. and you can you exactly. can help synthesize this and and demystify it a little bit. You know, there's a lot yeah. of lines and charts, but yeah. you as the practitioner can come on and and provide that next level of interpretation. Yeah. Uh, we got one more here from Michael. Tell us about this one, Michael. This is your data story on um, biological age. It looks yeah. like we've got someone in their seventies who is doing biological age testing and looking to optimize that number. So this, Am I reading that yeah, correctly? this was yeah, exactly. So. Although that previous, I don't do a lot of those charts for clients because they're quite time consuming. Um, we can do, we can if needed. What, so what I'm trying to create is a formula for my for the clients, which is I'm the only, I'm, it's just me working in the organization. So I, I'm i looking to try and create a really efficient system. So, and basically repeating the same testing for all my clients 
So all the all the efficiencies, rather than going off on lots of different testing for lots of different clients, getting the core work, the core blood work, the same. So we do this, we, we now call, it's called, I think, the core markers. And one of those, and then from that data, we create various things, one of which is the calculation of DNA, DNA and pheno age. And it was, I worked, worked quite a lot with Brian to get the, the sort of um, the lab values within Heads Up Health. But I'm not, but the, the flexibility within the system allows, it's not just laboratory values that you can create, we can create our own um, metrics, if you like. So the BM in bracket stands for body mapping. So that's a, a metric that you've created for my clinic. And oh, what awesome. I want so we're we're actually deriving this number for you. I didn't even realize we had built that for you guys. Well, yeah. So what so I've been working with Brian um to so all my all the lab all the results I upload are unique values to myself, to our clinic. Gotcha. So it's all set and programmed into the system. Um and as long as it's a numerical value, it doesn't have to be a lab value. So you can make so you can make up what you want. In, in many yep. ways. So what I've what I've what I wanted to demonstrate to clients is I mean really the bottom if we if we'd got the dates exactly that that bottom line should be in a, a straight line. But because of so it's a little bit it's a little bit quirky because a of a little bit squished. Um but above that you can then compare their biological age measured on the blood testing we do. So I put yep. the raw data in and you guys demonstrate what that looks like so this is all auto all my clients get this and it's pretty much i mean there's a little bit of i have to upload some of the data but it's pretty much automated so when i go on the call with a client we keep a track of the dna pheno age so this client has aged seven years in their actual biological age is, is slightly faster than their chronological aging which is what we're trying to do the opposite but it but it's a it, it's a nice way of of demonstrating to the client when 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 we're trying, we said what we're looking for is a plateau of their biological age as their chrono chronological age goes up, and it's a very, you know, for the client, it's a really that's really important to them. But you know, what other clinical system out there? If you said to them, "Oh, I want to show a trend line for a biological age, and I want to plot that against their chrono chronological age," and you know, I don't the other sort of electronic health records just don't have that perspective on health. It's more about coding and. You know, so so it's just really I just use that as an example because it's bespoke to what I do, um, and it's but it's but it's it's you it's not you it's not bespoke to all my clients get it. So it's a generic for all my clients. So it's efficient. So it's easily repeatable. Um, yeah. Well, we hear that a lot where there's just no yeah. good ways to trend some of this more yeah. uh, specialized type of diagnostic data. So I think in the next so, one, this is, um, a, this is just if you just go back one. I'll be quick. Yep. So this is oh, this again... is a good one, Michael, because I have to deal with this. This is homocysteine and uh, methylation and vitamin yes. B twelve. I love it. So this this client, he's done really well. Again, very disciplined. Does lots of stuff himself. We've worked really closely together, and his homocysteine has dropped from well above thirty down to fourteen. It's still still got That's some way to go, but you know, a huge you... improvement though. Yeah. And when you only says, why do I need to take these B, B complex vitamins again? And I show him those two graphs. He's, oh yeah, I remember now. And, and actually I feel better. So it, it's, it's correlating how the client feels to the data and the action, which is it's this set of supplements because, and hopefully we will at some, I'm so at some point, I haven't even done his SNPs, his DNA yet. So when we do it, I'm sure we'll find some methylation issues there for him. And then that's, again, he's very, he's interested in that sort of thing. So it'll be interesting to, for him to see the the real root cause, which probably lies in his genetics. Yep. So that's that, and that's, that's again that's the, I deal with the same uh, same uh, methylation issues yeah. and tracking homocysteine and getting the yeah. right supplements. Actually, there's a lot of yeah. B12s and methylation that don't work to move homocysteine. Yeah. So it's also we, getting the right supplements. We have a good company in the UK that all the client, which which is how I found. I was looking for exactly that, and that's how I came tripped across this company. So. Um, Communication, Finally, super important. How do you get them their information, their protocols? How do you keep in touch with them, keep them engaged? So, yeah, so it's, um, I'm, as I say, I'm the only, I don't have any staff. It's just me. I'm a solo, solo printer, if you want. Um, so the way I use the coaching note function to communicate with a client. So as soon as they've booked a blood test, 
they get this consultation note and if you basically those two i can switch on it's difficult to do it without live but i can switch on or switch off certain sections in the coaching note yep. Yep. at certain times so when first of all the client gets the coaching note and it says hello welcome this is what you need to do this is what's happening and then they if they ask me if they message me what should i do i say have you read the coaching note oh no they go to the coaching note they follow the instructions once i've had the blood test i then go back into the same coaching notes and then i can edit which paragraphs they see and because it's based on a template i've already got the template so there's a huge efficiency there. We're not sending emails back and forth to each other. It's just one common document. One rolling I, note. One rolling note that I can switch on and off. And when we've done the consultation, I can upload a consultation summary. I can attach files. I can attach instructions. And it's enabled me to manage quite a complex process from the patient onboarding, ordering the blood test, having the blood test, getting the results, reviewing the results, having the supplement prescription, having the macro prescription, and all of that I manage myself through with the client. And every time they ask, what should I do? I say, look at the coaching note. So so and then that they 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 are aligned with that note. And then once that session is over, that coaching note gets archived and it's there for future reference. And then the next six months, we just open another coaching note. Awesome, That's Michael. So um, uh, what would you share with other practitioners on the line here about your experience working with data? So, yeah, again, it's it's allowing the data to speak to you and the client, and then it informs a conversation, which becomes a three-way conversation between you, the data, and the client. Um, if the data is all in a muddle and a mess, it just becomes embarrassing and confusing, and the client just thinks you're a numpty because but having that at your fingertips for the right person at the right time. So when they pop on the call, you say, this is your data. This is what it's saying. What do you think? So really, a really it. simple conversation in, requires huge amount of, of organization and coordination underneath. And without the technology that you guys provide, I wouldn't be able to do it. Awesome. Thank you, Michael, for sharing those amazing insights. And it's been a great ride with you over the last few Thank years. You. And uh, we're fun. looking forward to many more. Thanks yeah. for being an early supporter with us. Forever. Thanks. Mr. Sachin, tell us about your work in the world, sir. Yeah, absolutely. So I alluded to it a little bit earlier that um, you know, here in Canada, we have limitations and restrictions on, on what's possible in terms of lab testing and things like that. So I wanted to come up with uh, a way to actually collect more data than ever before and to give people short feedback loops so that a, the clinicians and coaches would know what was working. We would also know uh, what to coach people on, right? So if somebody's got low energy and you're trying to figure out how do we solve for energy, it could actually be sleep that's the problem, or it could be movement that's the problem, or it could be that they're eating all the right foods, but they're eating them at the wrong time that's the problem. And so the the data that we collect from the Aura Ring and then and process through Heads Up Health has been you know really a godsend in helping us uh, coach our clients better. So our, our vision at Living Proof is really that the doctor of the future is the patient. And so having information like lap, you know, uh, like the Aura Ring data essentially decentralizes that information for clients, gives them short feedback loops. And uh, some of you may not know this, but I also coach practitioners. And so it's also great when we have companies that come to me and say, hey, I want to I want to offer my products to your to your community. And my response always is, well, let's test them and see how they work because we have hundreds of practitioners that we've bought rings for as part of our mentorship. And what's cool about that is that we can actually test and use cohorts to identify and partner with companies and do research before we roll out products to our larger community and to our patients and clients. We can roll it out internally and get feedback from clinicians. So I heads up it. helps us uh, kind of work with clients, but it also helps us work with uh you know, companies and organizations that have products and services that they want to offer to our community. And it also helps us uh, with our practitioners. So it's great to have short feedback loops and it's great to have data. And for those of you that you might, some of you probably already know this, that's why you're here. In 2020, data became more valuable than oil. So it became the, the most valuable commodity uh, on the entire planet. And so the fastest way to increase the valuation of what you do, the uh, you know, the authenticity of what you do and the validation of what you do is to collect data. 
And it's not uncommon for functional medicine practitioners to order a stool test, a Dutch test, and maybe even a, you know, a traditional lab, but then it's hard to get more data than that. And even if you're really good, you might get four data points a year, uh, but there's literally hundreds of data points that you can collect in between um, and give people insights in real time into what's happening with their health. So I love it because it helps us coach better. I love it because it helps us uh, test what we're going to offer to our larger community. We can test it in small batches and, and cohorts. And I also love that it allows me to, to stand uh, you know, on the top of the mountain and shout out about how great what we offer is it gives me the confidence to do that because it's it's not me that's saying that, it's the data that's saying that. The doctor of the future is the patient. I love it. Thank you. So, uh, Sachin, I know when I interviewed you on the podcast, you you were looking at HRV as, mm -hmm. as that, that uh, what would be the best way to say it? It's almost like the proxy indicator for everything mm -hmm. else that might be going on with someone. And I actually could not agree more. I think that it's arguably one of the easiest to collect and and most most powerful biomarkers. It's not going to tell you what's going on necessarily, mm -hmm. but it's going to give you a, 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 a everyday biomarker on the overall health of the system. So maybe you can share a little bit about how you use HRV in practice. Yeah, certainly. So I, I believe HRV is probably the single best proxy for overall health. And we know that when HRV increases, all cause mortality goes down. So paying attention to that marker, um, again, to kind of serve as, as a North star can be a, a great, um, a great marker to look at. What I also found to be valuable is, uh, with HRV, we can also, it can be a leading indicator if something is going awry or, you know, if Great. somebody is catching something or in the midst of catching something and they can take proactive measures before it turns into something full blown. And just a clinical pearl for everyone here. Um, if you have a client that's coming down with a virus or, you know, the vid, one of the things that we found to be just super, super helpful and has worked hundred percent of the time is uh, high dose melatonin. And what's really cool is when we give about 1.2 grams of powdered melatonin for four days, it pretty much knocks out anything. And I've saved weddings this way. Like I had a person message me on Monday and say, my sister has COVID, what do I do? And I said, well, here's what's working, try this. And Saturday they had the wedding. So um, what's cool is that we were able to, he was able to identify kind of an early trend. So we are able to get ahead of things. So that's the other cool thing about having this information. And so with, uh, with HRV and with resting heart rate, those are the two things that, you know, I know that, that Angie reviewed, uh, are two really good markers and they shift really quickly when somebody's doing the right stuff. So it's not uncommon yes, for do. us, for us to see like a 10 point drop in somebody's resting heart rate in the first week of going through our metabolic program. Wow. And what happens for the client is they get more buy-in right there. Cause a lot of people come to us, they've tried quote unquote, everything and they they've lost weight before. And, you know, they're always afraid they're going to put it back on, but they've never gotten healthy before. And so when they see that their health is moving in the right direction, they're more likely to double down on the process. And it also gives our coaches more confidence. So when, you know, a lot of times we have coaches who are, you know, they'll never replace the clinician, obviously, but they are very impactful and meaningful in our business. And so they want to know that what they're doing is working. So it helps build your staff's confidence in what you're doing. And then the other thing is, is we have our, all of our staff members wear aura rings. So it also serves as a way for us to, um, and we're all in heads up health. So it serves as a way for us to kind of, um, support one another and, you know, and provide, you know, provides us with meaningful insights on how we can, uh, guide our own in internal team members as well. So there's so many ways that you can use this information, uh, to build up your clinical confidence, to, to validate your process to research uh, specific products. You can do it with a small cohort of people if you want, and also to give you more confidence when you promote and market your message, you know, aside from anecdotal, you know, uh, testimonials that people offer, the data doesn't lie. And, and so we use the data in our webinars when we're promoting our services and promoting the efficacy of the coaching programs and uh, metabolic programs that we help practitioners launch. So it, it, it also uh, helps in that regard too. So there's lots of ways that data can increase the, 
the value of, of all of your offerings. And it's also great for us as healthcare practitioners to know our numbers and and to course correct if something we're doing isn't quite working very well. You know, I'll share a quick story. I had a, a client of mine, a friend of mine, and he actually developed a, a sleep formula. He just recently developed it. And he's, uh, he's always, uh, you know, telling me to try different things. And this was his own formulation. And he's like, you know, we're seeing amazing results with this. And he was sharing anecdotal information with me. And so I said, let me try it. And I had my wife and myself try it. And we noticed within the first three days, our deep sleep uh, increased by 50%. And so, so now I know I can have confidence in marketing and promoting this product because I can see that it's working. And of course, we can even roll it out with a, a smaller group of people and, and see if they get the same results. But uh, yeah, it just allows you to call, call people out on their bullshit if, it, uh, if what they're saying doesn't do what they say it's going to do. Well, a few things, uh, Sach, in there, I want to I want to pluck out. One uh, was um, uh, using the data as a predictive indicator. There's a case study on the Heads Up Health website from a company here called And Health, and they're working with autoimmune patients. And what they're looking at is they're actually using the heart rate variability to predict autoimmune flare-ups, and they can actually uh, several days before a flare there will be signals in the data that we can surface. And, and that could mean the difference between someone having a serious flare and going on prednisone and, and having to deal with that. So this also goes into working with complex chronic conditions as well. So there's lots of ways that this data can become an early indicator. That That's one great example. Uh, the second pearl you mentioned was making sure the staff all uses the devices that you're telling your patients to use. Because... You guys have to know how to read the data as as well or better than than the clients coming in. And, and that's one thing I see a, a mistakes made from a lot of companies that try to do this is you have to be the subject matter expert on this information. So you need to know what the numbers mean, how to read it, how the data works. So I think that's important for everybody to understand. And then uh, the last thing you mentioned was also the the practitioners taking care of themselves. And it's, it's very common that uh, in the medical professional, the doctors are putting out too much and not taking care of number one. So you do also get to uh, eat a little bit of your own dog food and, <laughs> and make sure that you're managing yourself properly so that you can show up as the best version of yourself. Yeah. You know, one thing I'll also add is when we launch, when we help practitioners launch their programs, uh, one of the things we have them do is actually uh, use uh you know, an aura ring to collect that data and to demonstrate the effectiveness of what they're actually doing. And so it serves them as a great marketing tool and, and proof. And in fact, in May, I went through my program and I'd gone through it before, but it was, it was time for me to go through it again. And when I saw my, uh, my aura ring scores went, my resilience went from, you know, in the middle, which is kind of where most people are. And then it went to exceptional within less than 10 days it was just awesome to be able to see that. And so it, it made me even more, you know, um, bullish on what we offer people. And so I feel like, you know, if we have more certainty and confidence in what we do, and we have obviously data to, to demonstrate that, uh, it's, there's nothing more powerful than overcoming our own imposter syndrome and not knowing if what we're offering actually works or not. I've been through burnout before once in my career, and that's before I really had any data to work with and uh, building heads up and doing all of the things, it's, it's very easy for me to uh, push myself too hard. And so I, I wear the ring religiously and I wear the, the CGM religiously and, and I make sure that I'm keeping my own health optimal and I can show up with the right energy and the right amount of sleep. It just changes everything I do. So yes, we need to use this with patients and clients, but we also need to use it ourselves to make sure that we're resilient and 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 we're um, taking care of number one. So it it, it works on both sides. Uh, I, this I is one what? example. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Sachin. Um, buy a ring for your parents if you love them. If you don't love them, I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry, but um, and put them in your heads up dashboard. Right. I mean, uh, I have my 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 parents on the on the ring in my dashboard. Yeah. Yeah. So who better to take care of than them, right? Yeah. And. Um, and so it's like a, it's a great way for you to keep a, you know, kind of keep a tab on them, make sure they're taking care of themselves. 
if they're an important part of your life, my mom has a ring. My dad doesn't wear any jewelry, so can't get him to wear one, but, uh, but my mom wears one and, and, you know, it's just a great way for us to make sure that they're going to bed on time and doing the same things that we would tell our clients to do. Well, my dad has a ring, Sachin, and he's just coming off of a flu. And every morning I'm getting notifications about his elevated body temperature. And four days ago is at 1.7 degrees. And then it went to 1.5 and 1.2. And then the last three or four days, it's just been about a deviation of 1.9. If you, if you know how to look at that data on the ring, but I know that he's not fully recovered yet. So just getting those body temp readings helps me understand where my dad's at on his recovery from a uh, flu virus. So um, uh, I just get those pings daily and I can reach out and say, hey, you're not fully there yet. You know, just take it easy. Uh, so that worked really well uh, with with my own parents. And like you said, you get a, a couple a couple test accounts to learn how to read the data on besides yourself. So I love that little tip, which is get one, get one for your parents and get them on there. Uh, this is an example, Sachin, of um, one of our users who uh, went off coffee and grains. And this is their data uh, 14 days after no coffee and no grains. And you see time of sleep is up 8.2%. Uh, readiness is up 12%. REM is up 12%. HRV is up 14%. Deep sleep up 20%. Resting heart rate down 8%. This is a simple lifestyle hack. And like you said, when you can show someone this, the buy-in you get from that to stick with it is really hard to measure. So a uh, good example of a data story here around Aura. And then I know you're tight on time, Sach, and I'll just pull this one up. But this is one of the reports we built for your wife, Deepa. And uh, what she wanted to know was, uh, this is not your data. This is just test account data from our site. So we just pulled a screenshot from a, one of our demo accounts. But the report was, when did they start my program? Because you take people on a rolling basis. Uh, what was their baseline HRV before they started my program? And then what was it? 14 days, 30 days, 60, 90. And then what is it at present day? So this lets you have checkpoints all along the journey just to see who's responding well. And you can see, again, there's a wide range, 40% increase. This is uh, a, a friend of mine uh, that, that had a 40% increase uh, versus an 11% decrease. So this is a custom report we built that lets you look at how each person's doing based on program start date. Um, mm -hmm. Anything you want to add here, Sachin? No, I love how you can test across a period of time. Uh, what we do is when we sit down with our clients, we generate a a report from the moment they started to present day, and then we can look for trends and um, and help them kind of parse out like, hey, what was happening at this time of the month or this time of the of your of your journey? Yep. And it's also cool to see when there's you know inflection points where there's a significant drop or significant uptick in a particular marker because then you can both kind of reflect on, hey, what do you, what were you doing different uh, around this time that you can think back to that you can double down on? And you know, another thing is is that I'll that I'll say, and I, I know you probably want to wrap things up here, but it is that you can also show your genius to and demonstrate your genius or your wisdom, whatever you want to call it to people who aren't even patients of yours. So it may not necessarily go through heads up health, but just something to think about. Uh, we're talking about data in general. Like I had a guy message me and he's like, Sachin, my sleep sucks. What do I do? And he's got an aura ring and, and, um, what was really cool is I said, hey, just do this lights out challenge. No, no artificial lighting after the sun goes down. And uh, I'm like, you'll know it's working because you'll see your data on your ring. And lo and behold, his sleep scores went through the roof. It was the best sleep scores he ever had just by simply doing that. And and guess what? Now that turns him into a raving fan of yours. And then since then, he's referred so many clients to me who then, of course, we put into the heads up portal. So, you know, use it as a tool to to help others. And, you know, I'm I'm big on, I'm bullish on Aura just because that's what we use. And there's lots of other great devices. But when I go to an entrepreneurial conference and I see people wearing an Aura ring, you know, those are my people, right? It's almost like a dog whistle to the people who actually, you know, care about their data and their health. And uh, it's a great icebreaker too. So I, I love it for a multitude of reasons. Um, and so, yeah, I just want, thought I'd share that as well. I, I took the lights out challenge to heart, Sachin. So now at my place, I actually use those fake candles 
uh, but they put out the same spectrum. So, and the cool thing about them is you can set them to come on right at sundown. And hmm. so after sundown, I've, I've, I've moved completely to, um, uh, light on the red side of the spectrum and, uh, keep the, the, na the, the artificial light down to a minimum. Cause I remember you, you shared that story with me on the podcast. So, um, I, I took that one to heart. Amazing. Uh, by the way, we all, uh, we also, to Sachin's point, we, we do have brands coming to heads up and they're asking us to find people who want to test products for them. You know, this is the clinical trial of the future where we can get 50, a hundred people with Aura Ring testing a product. And we know within 30 days if the product works or not. So, uh, we do have two active studies right now. One is with a probiotic company and, uh, one is with a, um, light therapy device. It's a light that sits on the desk and flickers at 60 hertz. And we're putting 50 people with aura rings through each of these. That gives the, oh, 40 hertz. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, that gives everybody um, a chance to participate in research, test out new products. And it helps these companies validate that what they're building is working. And in some cases it is. And in other cases, they got to go back to the drawing board. So we've got uh, two active products that we're testing right now. If you're listening and you have patients or clients who want to participate in this kind of um, new type of research study, just uh, you can you can send them to this link to register. They'll get free products. They can help us test a, f a few new um, products coming to market. And, and we'll have more of these coming out on a rolling basis. So um, I'm going to turn it back to uh, my team. And uh, Ryan, Michael, I'm going to bring you back on. And maybe you can help us announce the... Um, giveaway winners. Let me just find you here, Ryan Michael. I'm going to bring you, there he is. Can you hear us, Ryan? Yeah. Can you hear me? All right. Yeah. So we've got a bunch of cool prizes to give away here. Uh, which one do you want to start with? You want to start with the aura ring? Yeah, let's start with the aura ring. And uh, let me go grab the, uh, the, the contacts here that I had written down. Bear with me one second. All right. So we have Dr. All right. There it is. Uh, Vijath Thati. V-I-J-A-Y-T-H-A-T-T-E. Vijay, you with us? Yep. He got it. Awesome. All right, uh, we'll reach out. Uh, you actually, got the aura ring. Which one is next, Ryan? Actually, if he could go ahead and just um, go to that URL and fill out the information on that page, we can make sure we capture all the information to send him the aura ring. Um, if you want to use that QR code, it'll take it to the same page as well. Yeah, um, just scan the QR code, VJ. If you can't get it, just email us, support at headsuphealth.com. And then the uh, John Wenhold would be the next prize. Are you with us, John? Yes, I see John is on here. Which one does John get, Ryan? John gets the, let me get up to the prizes, sorry. The true diagnostics, oh, uh, awesome. the rage test. Right on. Okay, congrats, John. Angie, let's do yours next, the skincare. I want that one. Lisa Rosenberger. Dr. Lisa Rosenberger. I don't know if she's still with us. I don't see her in here. She may have had to drop off. All right. All right. Uh, let's see here. I have, how about night? K-N-I-G-H-T. Let's see. Also no longer with us. Marie, uh, Maria Kiveni. Maria. K K K yeah, I see Maria on here. Awesome. Kiveni? Yep. Are you on, Maria? All right, you got the skincare products from Angie. And then we've got the Delta G, Ryan, the ketones. Delta G. We have the winner for Delta G as Dr. David Harp. Harper? Uh, his name's cut off here on my screen. Yep, yep I see Dr. David on here. Fantastic. I think that's Sachin's colleague. All right. Dr. Harper, you got uh, uh, our favorite ketones coming to Delta G. I've been sipping them through this webinar. 
my faves. And then there's the Quicksilver liposomal vitamin C and GABA L-theanine. Dr. Andrew Coleman. Andrew Coleman. Andrew, we see you on. We've got some Quicksilver product for you. Okay, and both. last but not least, the $500 heads up credit. Dr. David Harper. I already seen that. He got one already. He oh, got right. ketones. Oh, sorry. I was jumped around here. Nishant Grubber. Grover. All right. Is he on with us? Yep. I see Nishant. Boom. Awesome. We'll reach out to everybody to follow up with um, the giveaways. Thank you for joining us all today. Uh, thank you to our panelists for sharing your expertise and your experience. And also thank you for all the awesome work you're doing in the, in the world. And uh, thank you for everyone who joined. We hope the information was helpful to you. We'll get the recording out here and get it all cleaned up. Michael, uh, Angie, Sachin, Dr. Lemansky, this was awesome. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to come share your expertise with us. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. All right, everybody. We're going to sign off. Have yourselves a wonderful day, and thank you for joining.